welcome everyone to today's Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community call. This is one that is more focused on Microsoft speakers. Today is May the 2nd, 2023. As mentioned before and for the record, um, I'll be hosting the call today. My name is Fabian Williams and I'm a product manager on the Microsoft Graph Custom and Partner Experiences team. Vesta and David are in um, Las Vegas uh, this week, I should say, for the Microsoft conference that's there. So you are all stuck with me today. Um, hopefully so it's a welcome change, however. Before we get too far, I want to just talk through the agenda. Um, we're, you know, as usual, because we do get um, a lot of new folks every week, um, you know, we like to go ahead and do the latest updates and news from the Microsoft 365 platform. Um, it may be repetition for some, but you know, with the feedback that we receive, um, you know, it is welcome news because sometimes people either forget or they, they don't realize, or some people, people are new of all of the assets and resources that we have out there available to you. We're going to talk through the blogs, um, some new items that were there. One thing I should have put here um, because I got it this morning is Gary here. Hopefully, Gary, Trin. if you're here, just you know, light a flare. So I can see that you're here, um, you know, with a thumbs up or something. Um, but Gary Trinder does actually have a slide if you'd like to talk to with regards to the Louis Free Power Platform uh, challenge that was out there. And uh, that'll be added as well. And then we do a group picture as well. Then we move into the real stars of the show, which is going to be Aicha Bass speaking about Outlook add-ins um, and the Teams Toolkit with Visual Studio. And also going to have Marcus Castro um, talking about Power Platform solutions in Microsoft Teams. Before we go too far into it, I uh, just want to ensure that um, we, we go through some of the assets. The, the platform um, you know, does allow for a tremendous amount of ability to allow you to become successful um, on your journey with Microsoft 365. Um, you know, to it, we have the M365 Power Platform community videos, um, and we ask you to subscribe today. There's tons of videos, and it's going to include this one, plus all of the other calls that we have either on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. could be reached at ak.ms community slash videos. Um, one that is new, um, um, but um, you know, really exciting, is also with the LinkedIn group for discussion and updates at ak.ms slash community slash li for LinkedIn. A lot of the work that we do is um, all open source, including you know, the real, real developer um, tools, real um, all of our documentation as well. And um, we do, it is open source, so we invite you to contribute to that, raise issues as you see them. One of the feedback I actually received from MVP Summit last week, which I guess I can talk about because it was just you know casual speak, was that um, the, the documentation um, around M365 um, and especially around the graph is, is really top notch and is in large part because I see it as well to be part of the repo is that we get a ton of contributions that don't people actually telling us where there's errors or omissions or need to be um, revved up. Um, you know, so really thank the community for that in terms of what you do. And I encourage you to also, um, you know, you know, sign up, um, you know, fork, follow, um, you know, these repos, um, you, know, you know, to your benefit as well. In terms of actual code, to ensure that you're not starting off with a blank slate in Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, or your ID of choice, um, you know we do have sample a sample gallery out there. Um, AKMS slash community slash samples. If you go and filter or search, you can actually find a various different samples across the different um, workloads that you're trying to um, achieve success with. And if you, this looks uh, onerous and you need you don't need to remember all of this, just go to AK.MS slash community slash home. Um, you know to get all of these um, items as well. Notwithstanding the assets that are there for you, we do have a ton of um, community calls centered around M365 and the Power Platform. The one that you're on today is the M365 and Power Platform weekly call that happens every Tuesday at the AK the MS that you see right there. However, we do have monthly calls, as mentioned before, um, around the Power Platform, the Identity Platform, and Office add-ins. And it does rotate between M365 and Power Platform community or the Viva Connection and SharePoint framework on a bi-weekly schedule on Thursdays, and that one's available to you as well. To download those um, uh, recurring invites, so it shows up on your calendar, I encourage you to click on the link for ak.ms or go to the link ak.ms community slash calls. Also, you know, as much as we do this and we love to do this, um, you know, we also do want to encourage folks, um, you know, to present. Um, nothing beats, you know, putting, you know, having your own explanation behind your own work. So we do encourage you to present, um, you know, at some of these platform calls. The one on Thursdays, as I mentioned before, are very community driven. However, it is not 
you know, on to Warsaw to also have um, people do demos on these Tuesday calls, which is largely made for um, for Microsoft. But to do that, um, go to aka.ms slash community slash request slash demo. And, you know, we will certainly take a look at that. And we do really want to see more for, uh, you know, contributing. What, what is that? Okay. All right. <laughs> Also, um, we do have a couple of other assets out there as well in terms of ensuring that you are successful. And part of that is making sure that you have the tools to be successful. Um, as long as you use um, the, the tenant for developer purposes, you can actually register and get a M365 developer tenant that is E5 capable, which means you can do a ton of different stuff with it. And um, I use it myself as well, especially when I'm going to be doing demos, you know, and I want a nice pristine farm. And you get that at ak.ms slash n365 slash dev program. And if you, again, want to ensure that you can start off, you know, with something that can get you from zero to hero really quickly, um, there are tons of samples that are out there, um, you know, uh, at ak.ms m365 slash dev slash learn. 73 learn modules are already available and the learn modules are fantastic. Um, Aicha is here as well. She can definitely speak to that because it gives you a very prescriptive path of going from step one, step two, module one, module two, module three, that takes you all the way through something that you can easily turn around and use for your own purposes. We do have um, podcasts available as well. Um, Jeremy Thake, Aicha, and also Paul Schaefline do the M365 Dev podcast. Uh, there's a weekly one by um, Vesa and Waldeck for PNP, and also between Hugo and David, they also have one for Power Platform called Power Platform Connection. So get it on anywhere that you, um, you know, have your podcast um, you know, picked up on. I've updated this because previously it was, I think, 1,500 and something, but it's now 1,650, 1650 um, uh, samples that are available. Thank you so much to the community for doing this um, you know, in our sample gallery that you can choose from. Again, if you go to the keyword and search and filter or just you know, select the product technology, tons of examples from people in the community just like yourself um, that have built solutions to help ensure that everyone here is successful. Can't speak how many times. I go out there and find people's code and um, just go ahead and refactor and I'm up and running. So th thank you for that as well. Um, in, if this is brand new to you, you heard me talk, mention GitHub a ton of different times already and, and uh, you don't know how to do it. Um, this is where David would come in and talk about sharing is caring. Sharing is caring is a safe space for people who are new to these developer technologies. Um, where you can um, come, you know, it's not recorded. Um, you, um, it, the call is um, is is well attended. Um, there's a variety of people there, ranging from novices to experts, to help you along the way ac across various different technologies. Um, I know David also is looking for volunteers because we want to scale this. Um, you know, as much as we're doing this ourselves right now, we want to be able to go across time zones, across different time slots, to ensure that this really, um, you know is accessible to everyone that wants to learn. So if um, we're looking for volunteers, and if you'd like to volunteer, please reach out to Vesa, David, or myself, um, You know, either in chat or an email to let us know um, that you'd like to participate. Thank you so much in advance. We do have um, as this week, as I mentioned, M365 conference in Vegas, but coming up on its heels next month, or this month actually, between the 24th and 26th is Dusseldorf, Germany, um, basically the European Collaboration Summit 2023. Vessel will be there uh, in DC, which I guess I just found out I'll be a speaker for this one as well. I found out yesterday uh, in DC. It's, it's local. I should why, why shouldn't I be there, right? There, it's going to be in DC in June, but there's also going to be one in August in Seattle and also Chicago in October. Um, really great conference. A lot of the people that you know here in this call or the MVP program will be there as well. So it's usually called the hallway track. Um, all the track is always good fun in terms of talking to people and really getting more information um, than you would normally get on a you know on a virtual call. And if you can make it, I encourage you to do that. Also in Dublin, in um, as I was talking to um, Marcus around about earlier, in the 20th to 22nd will be the European Power Platform Conference. It, you never know; I may show up here. It's definitely after you know my school, um, the school my kids' school let out. And uh, we are planning on doing some travel to Europe, so I may just show up at this one. We'll see. There's also some local events, and and you know, I, this is where I cut my teeth and started from. Um, you know, and these are all over the world. Definitely, community go to communitydays.org. On the list here are just some of the ones that are here in the month of May. Um, there's one, I um, mean, you know, very close to my heart, and only two hours away at um, in Philly. And again, may make that drive up there as well. It's only two hours away. So, um, you know, Tom Daly and others on the call, 
if you're on a call, um, you know, save me a spot, at least for a volunteer or something. Next, in terms of the news, only a few things to really um, call out here today. So we see a lot of traction in terms of comms on, on either a community or an MVP channel with regards to the Microsoft Graph.NET SDK. One of the updates from MISA, one of the PMs um, that owns um, the SDKs, is talking about basically the, um, the, the NuGet organization changing from Microsoft Graph to clients and tooling to just Microsoft Graph. There's also some news out as well with regards to supercharging your team's app development. And hopefully Gary's here right now as well. <laughs> I've taken a look to see, um, but he can probably talk to that as well when he talks about his little update as well too. In terms of security um, on the team side, some new uh, features coming out with regards to browser um, extensibility and support and speed deployment as well, and a couple other items I read through. It's a really good article, and I advise you to take a look at it. And um, Mark Cashman had a blog out that really goes into the roadmap pit stop for April 2023. A lot of cool and new things that are here. Um, in if you're planning your chart against M365 across all of the different workloads, ODSP, Viva, all of those stuff, take a look at that blog post um, as well. So you can actually, as you're building your solutions for either your company or yourself, you're in touch with what we're going to be doing that we can publicly share. Gary, are you on the call? I am here, Fabian. Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, so yeah, just wanted to give a quick update today for the Teams Toolkit Cloud Skills Challenge that we had running between the 12th of April uh, and the 26th of April. Um, so it was fantastic uh, event. Over 3,000 people entered the challenge, which is absolutely uh, fantastic. And we have announced our winners as well. So congratulations to everyone who is named on this slide. I'm not going to go through all the names, but um, you've been notified uh, via email, uh, all individually as well. But also to thank everyone for taking part as well. It was a fantastic challenge to see everyone sharing, uh, you know, the things that they've learned on um, social media. So it was great to see. And also, I want to thank uh, Louise as well, uh, who uh, you know, is a uh, Microsoft MVP member of the community that, that helped host and, and run this, uh, this Cloud Skills Challenge uh, for us. So, uh, yeah, thanks again for everyone taking part. Fabian, back to you. Thank you so much, Gary. So we're at the point in time where we encourage you to come off camera and um, the optional picture time. So let me go ahead and stop sharing here a little bit and move this screen down. Show you how often I do this. All right, let's go. Best always choose that one. I'm going to choose this one. Make it a little bit different here today. And 50 people before we can start. Let me move this away so we can get some more real estate. And here we go. Here we go. Um, let me start the recording. And this will say some, let's just see some hand waving, some hand waving. There you go. I think I'm going to get it right. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, a little bit more, a little bit more. All right, I think we are good to go. I'm going to go ahead and pause. We'll make a GIF animation out of that. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and move this back over to here. And Aicha, I can turn it over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Fabi. So let me share my screen. Hopefully you can see my screen. We can. We're on the Build Outlook add-ins um, with your introduction slide. Yep. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this session. My name is Aicha Bush. I'm a Cloud Developer Advocate at Microsoft. And today we will show you how you can build Outlook add-ins using Team Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. This is a new feature uh, added in the uh, Visual Studio Code V5 uh, version 5. It's in the preview at the moment, and you can test it out. It's available publicly. Um, and I will jump right in the demo. OK, so I think today we're going to learn everything on the way. Uh, if you haven't heard of Outlook Add-ins before, I actually have a great documentation for you to go through uh, at the end of the session so you can discover more what you can build in uh, as add-in. But we will use Teams Toolkit today to build an add-in for Outlook. Before I jump into Teams Toolkit, actually, on Visual Studio Code, you should make sure that you install the preview version of Teams Toolkit. You can easily do that by just going to Teams Toolkit extension, and here 
you will actually have install pre-release version. Now I already have pre-release version. It's asking me to switch back to the release. Um, when, once you install the pre-release version, then you will have a chance to test out what is coming new into V uh, version 5. And today we will discover more what we can do with uh, V5. So let's create a new app and see what is different. So first off, we have Teams capability part and we also have Outlook add-in part, uh, meaning that we can either create a Teams capability like a bot, tab, message extension, or we can create an Outlook add-in. Today we will create an Outlook add-in. Now we have two different options. The first one is Outlook task pan add-in. Uh, it's preview on Windows. You have to run this on your Windows machine. I'll go through the pre uh, prerequisites with you uh, in a minute. And if you already have an existing Outlook add-in, you can bring your add-in and run uh, on uh, Visual Studio Code and debug it through Team Socket. Today we will create something brand new. So let me choose this folder and I will give it a name as Outlook add-in demo. I hope I didn't use that name before, but once I hit enter, then Team Socket will be scaffolding my project right away. Okay, so there we go. We already uh, created Outlook add-in and it is pretty straightforward when you created something with Team Socket. It will give you the zero configuration experience. Um, I know my colleague Gary was talking about it for a long time in the community call. So if you're interested in learning more about Team Socket, you can go to the YouTube channel of community and check out the previous uh, sessions. Um, before I go through the uh, project route and also read me file, I want to initiate the debugging so that uh, we will have the uh, demo uh, right at the time when we finish the readme file as well as uh, the project route. Okay, we start installing NPM, let's go. Okay, in the readme file, we have some prerequisites and these are the important ones uh, because this feature is super new. To test this out, you need certain prerequisites to be in place in your machine. First of all, you need Node.js version 16 or higher and uh, Team Toolkit supports 16 or 18 at the moment. If you want to test this out on your desktop, then you need to have Outlook for Windows on your Windows machine and you need to use your beta channel. If you know if you don't know how to get the beta channel, I think the best way is to join the Microsoft 365 Insider program where you will get access to different channels and you can test out uh, different versions of Outlook by switching between the channels. And you'll need uh, Edge installed for the debugging purposes. You will need Microsoft 365 account again for the uh, testing purposes. And finally, you will need Team Toolkit for Visual Studio Code pre-release version. Make sure that you switch to pre-release so that you can uh, build new Outlook add-in app. And the experience is pretty straightforward. Now what we're going to do is just F5 and that's what we did. Let's let me walk you through the project um, folder as well. So in Outlook Add-in, uh, since this is running in Teams Toolkit, since we built this project using Teams Toolkit, we have some uh, familiar folders coming uh, with Teams Toolkit, such as App Package. Um, if you are new to version 5, App Package is the package where we keep all of the assets and manifest folder. And this is our manifest for our Outlook Add-in. Um, it looks pretty similar to Teams manifest, Teams app manifest, but there are some uh, di different areas such as um, I think the most interesting part for me was ribbons where we define what kind of uh, Outlook add-ins we will build. This is a Contoso add-in. It's the label of the group and under the group we have a button for show pen, a show text task pen, which will open up a task pen. And uh, we also have action button to per perform an action. That means that this add-in covers two buttons with two different actions. First one is the task pan and the second one is the uh, performing action as a task for the mail. Um, let me continue. Everything about your project, any project you build with uh, Teams Toolkit version 5, 
Um, any setup environment setup will go under .env.dev uh, folder. Here you will have um, all of the setup items and some of these, um, as you may know, some of these are already coming dynamically because we're using Teams app YAML file to generate all the Azure subscriptions. Um, basically, Teams Toolkit is creating all the AAD IDs for us. If you're building bot, then it is registering your bot to um, Azure as well. So uh, most of the steps are automated with Azure Bicep. Let me close the environment and infra files. Finally, if you are looking for where are my project folders, it's under the source folder. Uh, as I mentioned, we have two actions in this um, Outlook add-in. The first one is comments and the second one is task pane. Let's start with comments. Comments actually run simple actions with your email. And if I go to comments.tx, you will realize that we are performing an action here on the office. When I click basically the button for performing action, I will come back to Webpack in a second. Uh, it shows the message perform action and uh, we're showing a notification at the moment, but if you want to create any additional event, you can do that in this action function. And this is the HTML. We're pretty much running the Office JavaScript API here to show uh, our notification. In the task pan, uh, we are mainly, when I click the button, run button. We are showing the subject uh, of the email and you can change all of the actions here. If you want to do something else uh, with the Outlook, you can basically add in this uh, run inside the run function. And this is the HTML of the run function. Uh, it comes as a pretty great UI because it's using Fluent UI. And here we have a simple uh, run button and we are running the, uh, we are calling the function to get the subject of the email. That's pretty much the experience uh, when you build an Outlook add-in using Teams Toolkit. I want to show you the Webpack. Webpack needs to be running in the background and this is actually running the project and then once Webpack is ready, then your project will be ready to test out and seems like it has successfully run. Let me go to my Outlook. Okay, so I have a demo folder for you and I put this uh, sample email here just for you to take a look. So this is my email and these are the, <laughs> unfortunately I tested this before, so you're seeing duplicates here. I'm sorry for that. But these are our actions in the Outlook add-in and we can perform some actions for this email by just clicking these two buttons. First of all, Contoso add-in is the add-in we created. And as I mentioned, we have two different actions we can take uh, with these two different buttons. The first one is show pen, test pen, and the second one is perform an action. Let's try the first one. So when I click the first one, it opens up the task pan on the right. And when I click on run, it is supposed to bring me the subject, which is exactly the same uh, with the subject of this email. Obviously, if you select any other um, email, this the subject is supposed to change automatically because um, we are running this for an, uh, another email. Okay, so if you want to perform any action, uh, then this perform action button is basically doing that. And at, at this point, we didn't edit anything in the Outlook project. So this will be bringing us a notification. Let me click on here. And let's maybe try it like this. Okay, so maybe I perform too much. Okay, yeah, that's why. So when I click perform action, right now it is showing me performed action. If you want to take any other actions, just not, not only showing the notification, but taking some other actions and informing the user, then this uh, action uh, item in the add-in would be the best place for you. Otherwise, task pen is the other option. 
And that's pretty much what you can do, do with uh, Outlook add-in. And if you want to add more actions for your Outlook add-in, you can basically come to the source folder and add more here. Um, and uh, you, it, it's using pretty straightforward uh, TypeScript file and HTML for comments as well as for uh, task pan, so you can customize however you like. So let me close this out and go back to my slides. Last but not least, I want to highlight if you're new to this Outlook adding concept or if you're new to Teams Toolkit, we have a great documentation for you. Uh, you can visit academy slash Outlook adding TTK docs, and this will help you get started building your first project. We also have a blog post. My colleague Rabia, she is the original owner of this demo, actually. Uh, she authored the blog post for you uh, to create Hello World uh, Outlook add in, uh, so you can get started um, creating a new project. I also have the tab open for you because I want to walk you through. So uh, this is the official place uh, to get started in our documentation, create office add-in projects with Teams Toolkit. And this is where you can learn more how you can get started doing that. Uh, if you're interested in uh, doing something more, you can discover what is available here. And this is the blog post my colleague Rabi authored, and it is showing all the details step by step, just like how I did in this demo to run the app and what's going to be the output of the debug and uh, the explanation of the source code and some resources. So this is what I wanted to cover today. Uh, and if you have any questions, I don't know if I, I have any time uh, to answer but I can also stay here and answer in the chat. Hi, a fantastic demo. This actually goes to the point we we're talking about before where resources from you know, the, uh, the cloud advocates, the dev advocates, they put a ton of content together to make it really super easy for people to follow along. So thank you for running through it, um, Aicha, and also to show where the resources are. Um, Marcus, um, I'm just going to flip it to you um, at this point in time to go ahead and uh, begin your demo around Power Platform Solutions in Microsoft Teams to show that deep dive scenario. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Marcus Castro. I'm based in Dublin, Ireland, and I work as a product manager for Microsoft Teams. And my team works closely with customers and partners developing applications inside Teams, so it can be Pro Dev or Power Apps as well. And this year, we started working a lot uh, with our customers developing Power Apps in Teams and seeing what they have built so far. And we were seeing that they were having a lot of Power Apps just, you know, added as a tab or as a personal app, but not using the full Teams capabilities, as, as we say. So, yeah. Based on that, uh, we shared with the partners our feedback and they asked us to develop maybe a sample application that we could share and show all, the, all, all we could do about integrating Power Apps and Teams. And that's what I did. And I'm going to show, show you today. So I'm going to share my screen now. Can you see it? Yes, we can see the screen. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So yeah, basically we developed this incidents application. So as you can see, it's a Power App and it's installed as a tab in a team. So we have the incidents team with multiple channels here, right? So we have the health and safety, the HR channel, supply chain, and that's basically mapped to the categories that we have for each incident. So we have three categories and we have three different channels. And if you see here, each category we have associated a group ID with the team ID and a channel ID. So as soon as I create a new incident, an adapt card is going to be posted here uh, to that channel so people can you know, have a conversation and, and resolve that incident. And I'm going to actually show here my mobile just to show you that this worked very well on mobile as well. So it's responsive and yeah. So I'm going to create a new instance and I'm going to use my camera for that. So new mobile instant description. And it's a health and safety instant, a medium priority. I will leave the other blank. 
And I'm going to take a picture. That's a hazard. I'm going to maybe add some notes here. And I'm done. OK, as I selected should be a health and safety incident, you will see that a Power Automate flow will be triggered. And it's going to post an adapt card here uh, to the health and safety channel. So the people from this channel can have a conversation, a contextual conversation, and you know get that incident resolved. So if you can see here, these are tests that I were doing, and basically it has all the the most important information about that incident, so people can have a discussion. So for example, if I were yeah, just got it here. So you know I can tag people. So maybe Alex. Oh, actually, I'm used. I'm logging as Alex here. So actually, system administrator, can you have a look? So no, by posting this adapt card here in a channel, we already have you know all the people that's responsible for that category of incident. So just make them aware there is a new incident. They can chat about that. They can have a discussion, like a contextual discussion about that incident. And we also provide here some quick actions. I can click view details, and that basically is a deep link back to my app. So with one click, I straight away open my app straight away on that specific incident. So just save user time. And I can see all the details. And maybe we had a discussion here and we decided, OK, this should be Alex. Alex should be responsible to taking care of that uh, with one click we can click to assign that instant. And this again basically calls another Power Automate flow that's going to save that and it's going to update my card. And for doing that, we are using the new trigger as when someone responds to an adapt card. So there's no flow waiting there and anybody can really click this button and, and we do this update. So this is just showing, you know, things that we can do and integrating your Power Apps with Teams, you know, using the Teams structure, the channel structure, having conversation about specific items. In my case here is incidents, but it could be uh, a lot more. Other things that we develop and we really recommend is like a share functionality. So let's say, okay, it's a health and safety incident, but we need input from the legal team. So I could share with someone. I could uh, yeah, let's select myself here. And this again is going to post an adapt card to that person with the same things like uh, I can assign the incident to me or I can just click to view the details and that opens that back uh, straight away on that specific instance. I could also start a chat straight away with the person who shared that with me. And I will test this one because these were shared by system administrator. So using deep links, you can straight away start a chat with, with that person. Really cool. All right, so this is just examples of things that you can do uh, by integrating Power Apps and Teams. And I'm going to actually show a little bit of how I did that. Uh, so yeah, I'm basically using SharePoint as a database for, for this one. And you can see I have two lists. I can I have the incident categories and here I have the team ID and the channel ID. And that's basically used to send adapt cards when a new item is created based on that category. I send that. It's, it's just that. And then you have the, the instance list where I store all, all the instance. OK, I think that that's the demo, but I'm just going to show some slides here. And I'm going to share this with you. But basically here I have some links that you can use uh, to go deeper on the implementation phase. Uh, how can you really go deeper on that? So but yeah, this is just the idea that I want to share with you. So yeah, for example, how I automatically load. Oh yeah, I forgot to show this. So another thing that I did is if I open here the same application on the health and safety channels, by default, it shows only the health and safety instance. And if I open in the supply chain channel, by default, it shows only the supply chain instance. 
So that shows that this app is actually context aware. So when the app loads, I automatically identify, okay, is this app running as a standalone app or is this app running as a personal app or in a team? And if it is in a team, I can do something about it, right? I can filter the instance to show only important information for the user, which is what I'm, I'm doing here in this case. And to do that, basically on the app start of, of my app, I just have some, some functions here to get the parameters of the group ID, the channel ID, even the user team. So if the user is using the dark team or, or the, uh, uh, the default team, so I can adapt my app using that. And yeah, basically I just use then the group ID and the channel ID to filter the information by default when the user loads the app. Uh, to implement the deep link, I have again here a video on YouTube from April Dunning how to implement that. But basically, again, on your app load, you just query for the sub entity. And based on that, I, I just show my modal, or in other cases, you could uh, redirect the user to a different page as well. And that's what I do here. And to do the share functionality, Basically, it's a power automate flow that's triggered when the power apps uh, button is clicked, and I just get all the details of the instant, and I form a deep link like this, having the app ID and the ID of the instant, which is a sub entity ID. Yeah, here is just showing the the deep link, and here is showing the to me, which is that flow that's triggered when someone responds to that card. And this is just going back on the presentation that Stuart uh, did last week. If you didn't see, I, I really recommend doing. But it's really identifying which scenarios make sense to, to embed your power app in Teams, like how you can benefit from the Teams feature, right? So if, if it's there, if it is uh, something that a group has to come together to take decisions, to solve problems, it really makes sense to use this kind of approach of having teams or channels and you know posting adapt card so people can have that contextual conversation about something and get work done, get something done. Right? So consider as well this share functionality, like how you can bring others to the table to to have those discussions and you know make more people aware of, of something this really helps uh, you know increase the usage and and solve problems faster and yeah i think that's it for me this application we are going to upload to the samples to the power app samples for the community uh, just finalizing i had some issues with the power with the PowerShell template to create the automatic with the SharePoint list, but that should be resolved. And yeah, you will you can always download there and let me know if you find any issues. Great demo, Marcus. Look, I don't think there's any questions as much as there's a strong debate that have was we were happening in the sidelines about when you said using SharePoint as a database. So um, if oh, yeah. it, maybe yeah. that's a clarifying question as why you went that, that route. Is it, a, is, it a, is, it a, is it a reason? Is it a cost reason? Was it just an ease of demo reason? Um, you know, maybe speak to that a little bit. Yeah, so I choose SharePoint just because we wanted to share that with as many customers as possible. And as you know, some customers have premium licenses, some customers customer doesn't have. So SharePoint was just easier to make, you know, a broader number number of customers to, to show that. Uh, so some customers doesn't use database that doesn't have experience with that. And I think much more customers have experience with SharePoint. So that's why we chose that for this. Because, you know, it's just a simple application. Uh, and yeah, the goal was really to present to as many as many customers as possible. Totally fair. So we didn't Thank use you. any premium connectors as well. Uh, it's all you know free and included on, on our E3 or E5 license. Mm -hmm. So consideration for licenses, consideration for ease of use, and considerations for availability. Um, not something yeah. that you probably would you know recommend to 
you know, as a, if, you know, we have to have consideration for the amount of items that you sort of list because certainly it's not a relational database management system and you will hit into port perf issues, but to talk about the, the concept and um, to get it out there is, um, you know, is a good approach. Yeah. Thanks, Marcus. Um, also, thank you, um, Aicha, on your demo as well. I um, mean, you know, really cool stuff. I um, mean, you know, that we're coming out with that we can certainly use in our in our in our lives as we navigate M365 space. Um, Want to um, just speak to what's going to be happening next week on the 9th of May. Um, you know, we'll have Eric and Avadesh speak to us about Power Automate and Teams. Kathy Dew will come and speak to us about the latest in SharePoint site templates, site creation, and template updates. And Vesa coming back off, um, you know, his tour in Las Vegas, um, you know, around M365 Conf will be speaking about the latest in SPFX for Microsoft Teams extensibility. Again, if you'd like to um, uh, get this invite, just uh, it can MS community, MS speaker call invite. Also, as we do these um, these calls, you know, we love to iterate and make it certainly better. One way that we do that is by asking for your feedback. So please rate the call and the content that you've received this week and you know, in past weeks and often in future weeks at ak.ms slash community slash call slash feedback. Let us know, um, you know how we're doing and how we can make this a lot better. The recording will be, um, we're gonna, this is going to be a short call today, actually. Um, we're going to have to give you back 15 minutes of your life. Um, recordings will be available 24 hours on the M365 and Power Platform Community YouTube channel at ak.ms slash community slash videos. Um, if you've not subscribed, please subscribe today so you can get the notification of when we turn out these new items. If you're not following us on Twitter, please do at M365PNP for all updates and also on LinkedIn, akms.community slash li. Next call again, as I mentioned, would be May the 9th at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 um, Eastern, and I don't know what it is in GMT, but it was at the beginning of the call. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you for all the speakers that came here today. We can continue the conversation in chat. Um, you know, have a great day, and um, you know, I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.